Hi, in this video we're going to look at a simple series circuit. It has a problem in it. We're going to take a look and try to find that problem using available voltage, voltage drop, current flow, and hopefully a little bit of uh, diagnosis using some test lights. Let's take a look at the circuit. The circuit is powered. I have a light bulb and it is on very dimly. Okay, so I know I've got a problem. Now, looking at the circuit, it's obvious the problem is the resistor right here. But what I need you to do is use your imagination and pretend that this resistor is nothing more than a connector. All right, so with that in mind, we take a look and we cannot see the obvious problem here. So what do we do? Well, first thing, we want to take a look at our voltmeter. And I'm going to start out with available voltage while the circuit's operating. So let me turn the voltmeter on. Let's zoom in on here and take a look for those of you who haven't used the voltmeter in a while. Okay. This little wavy line over the V is AC voltage. This straight or dashed line over the V is DC voltage. The little M in the V, that's millivolts, and this happens to be DC, it's got a straight line and a dashed line. So millivolts, we're talking with voltage under one. We've got ohms, diode test. We have a little M and a big A. That's milliamps. Notice that the white line there is AC, it's wavy. So in order for this meter to measure DC amps, notice in yellow here is the straight and the dashed line. I'm going to have to hit the yellow button to make sure that I'm in DC amps, and we'll see that. All right, here's another AC. This is microamps. This is teeny little stuff, and we're probably not going to mess with any of this on the car. This has the same thing, though. Next to it, we have in yellow the DC. So same thing here. I would have to hit the yellow button up here to ensure that I am in DC amperage if I'm, again, measuring DC current. All right, I'm going to turn this on. We're going to go to straight. DC volts. Now, one thing you might see here, sometimes this is useful, sometimes it's more of a problem. I'm going to zoom in on here a little bit. Okay. Notice it says auto right there. If I wanted to change that, I would hit the range button. Now, there's nothing wrong with leaving it in auto if you've got uh, relatively stable voltage, but we're liable to see this voltage jump up and down. Now with this particular meter, auto range, it's starting here at six volts. So anything above six volts, it's gonna to have to change ranges. And let me show you what that kind of looks like here. Notice how it went OL before it eventually came into the actual voltage. So one of the things I recommend you doing is if you are looking at the voltages that are changing, go ahead and set the range to the range you'd expect to see. Now we're at manual six. This is a 12 to, to 14 volt system here. We hit range again. Now I'm set for a 60 volt maximum and when I check the voltage again, it is already in the range so we're not gonna see the OL as it tries shifting gears here, so to speak. There we go. Okay, so if I'm looking at this Probably the uh, simplest thing to do would be to check available voltage with the circuit operating. Now, sometimes uh, determining whether the circuit operating or not is uh, difficult. In this case, I know it's operating. It's not operating very well because it is dim. So I know the current is flowing through there. So let me show you how quickly available voltage can be measured. My black lead, I'm going to put on a known ground, preferably the negative terminal of the battery if possible. Then I'm going to go ahead and test. All right, this is the voltage coming from the power side. Now, do you start at the power side? Do you start at the ground? Do you start at the load? Well, it just depends on the circuit. Many manufacturers are going to recommend that you start at the load and work your way either towards the power side or toward the ground. Uh, in this case, it's very simple to start at the power. So I'm just going to start at the top and work my way down. I've got a little over 12 volts available coming out of the power supply. I'm going to check the wire going into, again, this is a connector. This is not a resistor. 
you notice I've got a little over 12 volts there. Now, coming out of the connector, I only have four volts. Now we started with 12. I've only shown four volts here. I've dropped eight volts across this connector. Now, using available voltage, it worked out very well here. I know that the problem has to be at that connector. I can continue on down, take a look and see. Still, just a little over four volts at the light bulb. On the ground side of the light bulb, I'm showing about zero, which is what we want to see. We should see very close to zero volts on the ground side. Okay, that's available volts. It worked pretty well. Now, I mentioned voltage drop. Uh, a voltage drop, uh, the meter does a pretty good thing. It kind of acts as a uh, calculator of sorts. It is going to show me the difference in voltage between these two leads. And it's, it's kind of what it's looking for. So if I take a look, I'm going to put one lead on the battery power coming out, okay, or my power supply. I'm going to put my negative lead on the wire that's going into my connector here. And notice I have zero volts dropped across there. Now, that measure a voltage drop, but that's the key. I have to have current flowing through the circuit. And again, in this case, I know that I have current flowing because I can see the dimly lit bulb. Now, what's happening here is as I take my voltage drop, I see I'm at a zero. So that's telling me that I have really not very much resistance in that wire. If I had a lot of resistance, then the current as it was flowing through that resistance would cause a voltage drop to occur. And in our case here, the resistance of that wire is not enough for the current that's traveling through it to create a voltage drop. So that's good. Now, when I check the voltage drop of my connector here, and again, remember this is make-believe, this is our connector. And there we go, we've got a little over eight volts. And I was able to determine that by looking at the available voltage on either side of that connector. So again, the voltmeter, it's just doing the math for me. Instead of having to subtract uh, four from 12 to get eight, it's just doing that right for me there. Now, if I wanted to continue with checking the voltage drop of the circuit, I place lead on either side of the wire, leaving my connector going into my light bulb. And again, I've got zero voltage drop there. I know there's current flowing because again, I have that dimly lit bulb. So again, the resistance in that wire is not sufficient enough to cause a voltage drop with the current that is flowing through that wire. Now, if I measure the voltage drop of the load, the light bulb, there I see that we have a little over four volts, okay? And that's to be expected here. If I have four volts available to that light bulb and that light bulb is the only load from there to ground, then it should drop all of the voltage across it. If this circuit was operating properly, I would have a full 12 volts drop across that load. Okay, now I can continue to check the ground side of the circuit. And again, I have the leads. There we go, a little difficult to see that ground lead. Okay, and if we look there, I've got zero volts. So again, the resistance in that wire is not sufficient enough to cause a voltage drop with the current that's flowing through it. Okay, so there we've got voltage drop and we have available voltage.